Let's learn about prehistoric life with BBC Nature. Life. Life on Earth started around 3.8 billion years ago and has since evolved and diversified through the process of natural selection to be adapted to almost every environment possible. There are currently an estimated 1.9 million animals, plants and other forms of life on Earth. Looking back through time, by means of the fossil and phylogenetic record, we can see that the Earth has been home to many more species than are alive today. Taking a historical perspective shows that life is constantly evolving, with the success and dominance of different groups waxing and waning over time. Animals The animal kingdom is estimated to contain about 10 million species. The defining characteristics of an animal include the fact that it is a multicellular organism, that its cell walls are not rigid, and that it gets its food by eating other living things, rather than by processes such as photosynthesis. Animals can range from being tiny creatures, which are only a collection of a few cells, to giants like the blue whale. Today's video will be concentrating on prehistoric life from the animal kingdom. So first up, we have reptiles. The reptiles are a class of vertebrates. Characteristically, they are cold-blooded, have dry, scaly or horny skin and a four-chambered heart. Most reptiles lay eggs with leathery shells, but a few types bear live young. Because they are cold-blooded, reptiles are more common in the tropics than in temperate regions and are not found in polar areas. Dinosaurs Dinosaurs were the dominant land animals for 160 million years, making them one of the most successful groups of animals ever. The name dinosaur translates as terrible or wondrous lizards, and they certainly evolved in a diverse range of sizes and shapes, from the gigantic plant-eating sauropods to the quick meat-eating tyrannosaurs. They also sported an impressive array of body modifications, including horns, scales and crests. So far, the remains of over 1,000 different dinosaur species have been identified from fossils, though technically, birds are feathered dinosaurs, meaning dinosaurs aren't really extinct at all. Lizard-hipped dinosaurs the earliest known dinosaurs, lizard-hipped dinosaurs, first appeared in the mid-Triassic. As well as these first dinosaurs, the order includes all the carnivorous dinosaurs and one group of herbivores, the sauropods and their close relatives. The name lizard-hipped comes from the shape of their pelvis, in which the pubis points towards the front of the animal. Birds are descended from this group of dinosaurs. Theropod dinosaurs Theropod dinosaurs were the top predators in the Jurassic and Cretaceous periods. For over 100 million years, theropods were the only large carnivores on land and included all the infamous carnivorous dinosaurs, Tyrannosaurus, Velociraptor and Spinosaurus. However, not all theropods were predators. Some evolved away from their carnivorous origins to consume an omnivorous or herbivorous diet. Birds are the only living descendants of the theropods. Tyrannosaurs The family of tyrannosaurs includes the famous Tyrannosaurus rex, as well as other large carnivores such as Albertosaurus and Tarbosaurus. They evolved in the late Cretaceous and their large size made them the top predators of the time. Like human beings, Tyrannosaurs went through an adolescent growth spurt, increasing greatly in height and weight until they approached sexual maturity. 
Thereafter, they grew much more slowly until they reached their final size. Tyrannosaur fossils are found in Asia and North America, though their ancestors also lived in Europe. Tyrannosaurus rex, one of the greatest carnivores, though not the largest, ever to have walked the earth. Tyrannosaurus rex, or T-rex, ruled North America during the late Cretaceous period, some 68 to 65 million years ago. The massive skull of this mighty theropod dinosaur measured 1.5 metres and was balanced by a long, heavy tail. The jaw, filled with huge, saw-edged teeth, could deliver a devastating bite. Top predator or mighty scavenger? The tyrant lizard king was without doubt a dinosaur to be feared. Thirty specimens have been recovered, some of which, such as those named Sue, Stan, and the juvenile Jane, are almost complete. Dromaeosaurs Dromaeosaurs, also called raptors, were carnivorous dinosaurs closely related to birds. Several fossils have been found with evidence of feathers, and many scientists believe that the whole group had an insulating covering of feathers. All dromaeosaurs have a large sickle-shaped claw on each hind foot, which helped them climb. Small species probably climbed trees, but there is speculation that larger ones used their claws to cling onto prey and as weapons. Dromaeosaur species ranged from about 1.5 to 9 metres long. Velociraptors Velociraptors were made famous in the film Jurassic Park, though they were a little less impressive in reality, standing not much taller than domestic turkeys. A famous fossil has one locked in battle with a protoceratops. The predatory velociraptor had pinned down its plant-eating victim, but both appear to have been overcome, perhaps by a sudden sandstorm. Fossils also show that velociraptor had large feathers on its forelimbs, perhaps used for display. Spinosaurus Spinosaurus may have been the largest meat-eater to walk the earth, at a jaw-dropping seventeen metres long and weighing up to twenty tons it was even larger than the mighty tyrannosaurus the story of this giant killing machine is a recent one although bones were found and described between nineteen twelve and nineteen fifteen in egypt it's only in the last few years that a skeleton has been reconstructed it would have been a formidable predator of North Africa's giant fish one hundred million years ago. The long, narrow skull is very similar to modern crocodiles, and Spinosaurus lived and hunted in water and on land, as crocodiles do today. The most distinguishing feature of this enormous dinosaur were the 1.5-metre spines running along its back. They formed a sail that could have been used to regulate heat, to deter enemies, or to attract potential mates. Sauropodomorph Dinosaurs Sauropods are among the most famous and recognisable dinosaurs. Long-necked, long-tailed giants that include Diplodocus and Brachiosaurus. Early sauropods were bipedal and quite small compared to their later descendants which became the heaviest and longest dinosaurs. It requires a four-legged stance to get truly giant size, as you need to spread your weight. Like elephants today, the largest sauropods could only move at a walk, as their leg bones couldn't withstand the impact of trotting or galloping gaits. However, just because they were restricted to walking didn't mean they couldn't put on a turn of speed. Their top walking speed has been estimated at between 20 and 35 kilometres per hour. Diplodocid dinosaurs 
Diplodocids were a family of giant sauropod dinosaurs. They had shorter legs and longer necks and tails than the other types of sauropod, but were still massive beasts, weighing several times more than African elephants. Despite being herbivores, their teeth were unsuited to chewing plant matter. So, like today's chickens, they swallowed stones to grind the food in the stomach. Unlike chickens, being thirty meters long, they had to select rather large stones for this to be effective. It's thought that they may have used their long necks for reaching down to feed on the ground, rather than for reaching up into the crown of trees, as giraffes do. Apatosaurus Apatosaurus used to be known as Brontosaurus, following a labelling error on a very similar specimen. Subsequently renamed, Apatosaurus was one of the larger sauropod dinosaurs, and therefore one of the largest animals ever to have walked the earth. Peg-like teeth effectively stripped leaves from trees, but were no use for chewing, so Apatosaurus probably swallowed stones to grind up its meals in the gizzard. Enormous size, herding behaviour, and a whip-like tail would all have provided valuable defence against the meat-eaters of the time. Bird-hipped dinosaurs Bird-hipped dinosaurs derive their name from the shape of their pelvis which resembles that of modern birds, whose pubis points to the rear of the animal. Unexpectedly, birds did not evolve from these dinosaurs, but from the lizard-hipped dinosaurs, since this shape of pelvis has evolved more than once. Another distinguishing characteristic of the bird-hipped dinosaurs was a horny beak, which they used to crop plants, much like a horse or deer uses its front teeth today. Duck-billed dinosaurs, horned dinosaurs, and armoured dinosaurs were all of the bird-hipped variety. Armoured Dinosaurs While early armoured dinosaurs had bony scutes like crocodiles, later forms took armour to the extremes, evolving large plates, spikes, clubs, and carapaces. Covering yourself in heavy armour proved to be a very successful anti-predation strategy, as armoured dinosaurs evolved during the early Jurassic and lasted right up until the mass extinction at the end of the Cretaceous period. Though there were many variations and modifications within each type, they came in two basic forms. The stegosaurs, with their rows of spikes or plates along the spine, and the more heavily armoured ankylosaurs. Stegosaurus Although nowhere near the largest of the Jurassic dinosaurs, Stegosaurus was still about the size of a bus. Distinctive and heavily built, they were herbivores with short forelimbs and would have walked with their small head close to the ground and the four-spiked tail held high. The double row of plates running along the back helped control body temperature and were probably used in display or possibly in defence against carnivorous allosaurs. Most fossils for the three known species, including some complete skeletons, have come from the USA, although a recent discovery in Portugal suggests a wider distribution. Ankylosaurs Looking like reptilian armadillos, or prehistoric tanks, ankylosaurs were heavily armoured dinosaurs with protective plates over their head and shoulders. Some species took their protection to extremes and even had armoured eyelids. Spikes and protrusions were common in a bid to deter predators from taking a bite. Some ankylosaurs had a large heavy club at the end of the tail for wielding as a weapon or, as has also been suggested, for sexual selection. To carry the weight of all this heavy armour, these plant-eating dinosaurs had very short, stout legs. Seropod dinosaurs 
Seropod dinosaurs were all plant eaters and include the horned and duck-billed dinosaurs. The secret of their success was in their teeth. These were much more efficient at grinding up plant food than your typical dinosaur's dentition. So seropods were able to extract more nutritional value from their food and tackle plants that others found too tough to digest. It wasn't until big herbivorous mammals evolved that such efficient chewing teeth were seen again on Earth. Horned Dinosaurs Speculation continues over the function of the wicked-looking horns and grand neck frill of the larger ceratopsians, such as Triceratops. Were they for protection, display, or even to control body temperature? The earliest horned dinosaurs were quite small and got about on two legs. The four-legged giants that characterised the group came later. Fossil evidence suggests horned dinosaurs originated in what's now Asia during the Cretaceous period, spreading out and thriving as herbivores. Many of the species are recognised from their skulls, which seem to be the part of a ceratopsian skeleton most likely to be preserved. Triceratops Together with the bony frill behind its extraordinarily large head, the three distinctive horns of the Triceratops were traditionally viewed as defensive weapons for this mighty herbivore. However, it is likely that they were used in courtship and dominance displays, much as modern deer use their antlers. One of the last groups of dinosaur to evolve, Triceratops, would have shared the landscape with, and been preyed upon by, the awesome Tyrannosaurus. There is little evidence that they ever had the spectacular battles so often depicted, however. No complete Triceratops skeleton has yet been found, and what was thought to be another horned dinosaur, Taurosaurus, has recently been identified as the fully mature form of Triceratops. Protoceratops were the beak and clawed legs of Protoceratops fossil remains the origin of the lion-bodied, eagle-headed griffin of Greek legend? We know now that Protoceratops was an early type of horned dinosaur related to Triceratops. These herbivores would have been about the size of sheep, and may have roamed in herds, devouring the vegetation of the time. Certainly, the finding of fossilised remains of many individuals in one place suggested herd behaviour. One of the two recognised finds of Protoceratops fossils was infamous for having a Velociraptor skeleton wrapped around it as if locked in battle. Ornithopod Dinosaurs With some of the most advanced chewing apparatus ever developed by a reptile, Ornithopod dinosaurs became a most successful group of herbivorous dinosaurs. They rapidly became a prominent feature on North America's Cretaceous landscape until they were wiped out by the famous Cretaceous Tertiary, or KT, extinction event. Early ornithopods were only about a metre long and could probably run very fast on their hind legs. They evolved to become as large as some of the mighty sauropods, walking and grazing on all four legs, but still using the hind legs for running and reaching up into trees. Notable ornithopods include the duck-billed hadrosaurs and, of course, iguanodon. Iguanodons Plant-eating iguanodons were large dinosaurs capable of walking on two legs or on all four. Their outstanding feature was a highly specialised five-fingered hand made up of an erect and spiked thumb used for defence or perhaps foraging, three middle fingers and a grasping fifth finger. Iguanodons were one of the first dinosaurs ever described, and artistic impressions have changed much with each new discovery. Currently, it's thought they held the head low to the ground and their long, heavy tail in the air for balance, rather than vice versa. 
herds of iguanodon, the different species varying in size, flourished in Europe and North America during the lower Cretaceous period. Duck-billed dinosaurs Duck-billed dinosaurs were successful and common herbivores from the upper Cretaceous period. The secret of their success perhaps lay with the duck-shaped bill that clipped vegetation and the many small teeth that ground it down. There were two types, some with a bony crest on their head for resonating sound, and some without. Fossilised nest sites have shown that some species may have travelled to communal nesting grounds to lay eggs, as many bird species do today. Fossils from the many species are found all over modern-day Europe, Asia and North America, and show that some grew to around 12 metres. Ichthyosaurs Ichthyosaurs were predatory marine reptiles that swam the world's oceans while dinosaurs walked the land. They appeared in the Triassic period, dying out around 25 million years before the extinction event that wiped out the dinosaurs. Ichthyosaurs, literally fish lizards, evolved from an as yet unidentified land reptile that moved back into the water. These huge animals rapidly diversified from being lizards with fins to developing a much more streamlined fish-like form built for speed. One species has been calculated to have a cruising speed of 36 kilometres per hour. These enormous predators remained at the top of the food chain until they were replaced by the plesiosaurs. Pterosaurs More commonly known as pterodactyls, pterosaurs were winged reptiles, the first vertebrates to evolve powered flight. The evidence for flight comes from their light hollow bones, large brains, and an extremely long fourth digit providing wing support. The discovery of large numbers of fossil species indicates that pterosaurs were initially highly successful. Species ranged from the size of sparrows to the largest known flying creature of all time with a 12-meter wingspan. Towards the end of their reign, only the larger species remained, as the smaller species were outcompeted by early birds. Birds evolved flight separately to pterosaurs in a classic example of convergent evolution. Hatsigopteryx As flying animals go, they don't get much bigger than Hatsigopteryx. It was a pterosaur of gigantic proportions, standing over five metres tall, with a wingspan of at least ten metres. This would have made Hatsigopteryx one of, if not the, largest flying animals ever known. The robust skull was three metres long and among the largest of any non-marine animal. The massive lower jaw was found to have a groove that would have allowed for an impressively wide gape. Hatsigopteryx's heavily built skull was in contrast to other pterosaur skulls that were made up of lightweight plates, the necessary reduction in weight being achieved by the skull bone's internal structure. Hatsigopteryx would have been flying the skies 65 million years ago above what is now... Europe. Postosuchus. A cousin of modern crocodiles, Postosuchus was an archosaur, the lineage of reptiles that include the crocodiles, dinosaurs, and birds. Reaching lengths of five metres, Postosuchus was the top predator during the late Triassic in what's now the southern USA. Since its front limbs were shorter than its hind limbs, there is debate as to whether it walked on two legs or four, but most paleontologists favour the latter. Its stance, with the legs under the body, would have made it a faster and more efficient runner than a modern crocodile. Most Postosuchus fossils have been found in Texas's post quarry, hence the name. Synapsids Synapsids are an unusual grouping of animals 
an offshoot of the ancestors of the reptiles that includes all of the mammals and the mammal-like reptiles, also known as proto-mammals. These have their ambiguous name because they don't fit neatly into either category. They include the sail-backed prehistoric monsters Dimetrodon and Edaphosaurus, the tusked Dicynodonts, and the ancestors of all today's mammals. Synapsids ruled the land in the Permian period, becoming the largest and most numerous terrestrial vertebrates. With the exception of the mammals, they were all extinct by the mid-Cretaceous. Therapsids. The therapsids include all mammals, plus the many mammal-like reptiles, such as Dicynodon and the saber-toothed Gorgonopsids. The therapsids rose to prominence in the Permian to become the most successful land animals of their day. The secret of their success was in their teeth. As therapsids evolved new and better methods of chewing plant and animal food, However, the group took a hammering in the mass extinction at the end of the Permian, and were sidelined for millions of years as the dinosaurs diversified. The Therapsids' ultimate successors, mammals, now rule the earth, courtesy of those efficient Therapsid teeth and jaws. Cynodonts Cynodonts are said to be the missing links between reptiles and mammals. All of the latter are, technically speaking, cynodonts themselves. It was during the evolution of the cynodonts that many things typical of mammals arose. Their jaw structure, the hammer, anvil and stirrup bones of their inner ear, and the secret of their success, their efficient chewing teeth. Things which don't fossilise so easily, such as warm-bloodedness, furry bodies and milk production, also probably arose in the pre-mammalian cynodonts. They were most likely to have been nocturnal, as the areas of the brain associated with smell and hearing, useful senses in the dark, were enlarged. Ammonites Ammonites were free-swimming mollusks of the ancient oceans, living around the same time that the dinosaurs walked the earth and disappearing during the same extinction event. They came in a range of sizes, from tiny species only a couple of centimetres across, to large ones reaching over two metres in diameter. The animal will have lived in the last and largest of a chain of spiralled chambers. Filling these chambers with fluid or gas allowed the ammonite to sink like a stone to avoid predators, though ammonite shells with tooth marks on them have been found, evidence that it didn't always work. Fossilised shells are usually, but not always, beautiful spirals. Trilobites Paleontologists have identified more than 20,000 different trilobites, an amazingly diverse group of animals. They all lived in the sea, some burrowed in the mud, some crawled on the surface of the seabed, and others swam about in open water, or inhabited reefs. Although some types of trilobites were blind, most had well-developed eyes with very sophisticated lenses that had a great depth of field. Some species had eyes on stalks, and these are believed to have buried themselves in the mud with only their eyes sticking out like periscopes.